Hello, my name is Nicolas Michel. I'm a technical product manager in the networking and security business unit at VMware. I'm working on the layer 3 features and on the Edge platform within NSXT. And today we are going to talk about ECMP or equal cost multipath within NSXT. A quick look at the agenda and we are going to start the presentation with um, a quick reminder on, on the routing and what is ECMP. Uh, then we are going to dig a little bit deeper and we are going to talk about how do we implement ECMP within NSX so we have multiple layers on where we can find and implement ECMP. So the first layer would be between the DR and the SRs and the other layer would be between the SRs and the top of rack switches. Then we are going to talk about uh, how do we implement ECMP within a BGP architecture with uh, BGP best path multipass relax. And of course, we are going to end this presentation uh, with talking about uh, OSPF and how do we uh, configure and how do we leverage uh, ECMP for uh, an OSPF architecture. Let's talk a little bit about routing generalities and ECMP. When multiple routes with uh, an identical cross are received from different next hop and of course multiple uplinks, we can leverage ECMP and load balance the traffic across multiple uplinks. It is critical to remember that the router will take into consideration a route entry using a destination and its uh, the prefix length. For ECMP to be active on a particular destination, the route entries must have the same administrative distance and the same metric. Of course, the same administrative distance means that the, that the route must be learned by the same routing protocol. So, um, and for example, the administrative distance for eBGP will not be the same as uh, the administrative distance for OSPF. So here we can see that we have four service provider routers. They will advertise the same default route to the data center router using eBGP. So in that case, the administrative distance um, on, the, on the DC router will be exactly the same and we can see at the rib output. So the administrative distance for, for eBGP will be the 20, right? So if we have a look at the show IP route, we can see that we have the protocol. We can see that we have um, the network plus the prefix, which is 0 .0 slash 0. Uh, the AD and the metric is uh, 20 and 0. The next hop will be uh, different, obviously, so that we can leverage the different, uh, all, all the uplinks and the outgoing interfaces are different as well. And the little asterisk in uh, the show IP route will show us that uh, this route, the, these four entries will be considered as the best route. So we are leveraging ECMP in that case. If we have a look at the, uh, show IP route, for example, for another prefix, we we can see that we have another uh, where we have four routes for the 192.168.0.0 slash 16. So we are leveraging four uplinks here. So we are load balancing uh, each flow across um, uh, the four uplinks that, that we can see. And if we do a show IP route for the destination 192.168.10.10, we can see that we have a routing entry for the prefix, which is 192.168.0.0 slash 16, right? But for example, we have more specific prefixes for, uh, for example, for, for the prefix 192.168.250.0 slash 24. And for that particular prefix, we are learning this route only through the, the uplink 354 and via 172.16.10.10. So for this particular prefix, we will not use ECMP. A quick reminder regarding ECMP is that it is not a routing protocol. It is a feature that is supported by routing protocols, for example. Uh, it is possible to leverage ECMP by configuring multiple static routes as well. And for that, we, will, we would have to uh, the, well configure the static routes with different uplinks and next hop. And there are multiple flavors of ECMP. So the per flow or per packet ECMP, and let's start with the per packet ECMP. It means that for uh, each destination that is enabled for ECMP, each packet for a particular flow will be load balanced throughout the, all the available links. 
it guarantees that we have an equal cost load balancing thing across all the links and as all the packets are being load balanced. The drawback here is that it is possible that packet will, will arrive out of order at the destination router and that that destination router will be in charge of reordering the packet before sending them to the destination. Uh, this has an impact on the performance uh, because we have to take into consideration buffering. And uh, for that particular reason, uh, it is more uh, uh, it is more than commonly used that uh, the per flow load balancing is implemented in uh, data centers and architectures. And instead of using the round robin algorithm in order to select a particular path uh, for each flow, the router will compute a hash based on either two tuples or five tuples. When this hash is calculated, the gateway will select a particular uplink to reach de the destination. The NSXT Edge supports a 5 tuple CMP hash uh, with uh, the source IP, the destination IP, the IP protocols, the source and destination ports, while the ESXi uh, supports the 2 tuple CMP uh, hash with uh, the source and destination IP. As a result, it means that all the packet belonging to the same session we'll use the same uplink on the NSXT edge because uh, the source IP, destination IP, the IP protocol and the source and destination port, they will not change. These, these fields will not change uh, in a particular session. And in traditional ECMP topologies, when an outage is being experienced, the router will reprocess the ECMP hashing algorithm and it will select a new uplink for all the flows. Uh, with ECMP stickiness, only the flows that were using the link that experienced the outage will be rehashed and a new uplink will be selected. So, for example, uh, the traffic to 1.1.1.1 will be using um, the link number one, right? And if we have an outage, um, the traffic, well, that particular flow will be rehashed and uh, the DC router will, for example, take the path where it will use the path number four, but for all the other flows, they will stick to the other uh, to the other uplinks that were the, uh, previously used before the outage. NSXT does not currently support ECMP stickiness. Let's dig a little bit deeper on how ECMP is implemented within NSX. So we have multiple layers of ECMP within NSX, as I mentioned previously. The first layer that we are going to talk about is the layer between the distributed router and the service router. In this topology, we have a tier zero in active active mode, meaning that we have a tier zero SR that is active on edge node one, and we have another tier zero SR that is active on edge node two. In order to interconnect the DR that is distributed throughout the entire NSXT fabric, to, uh, we, with the tier zero SR, we need to interconnect them using a transit segment. And on that transit segment, the SRs, they have an internal IP address of 169.254.0.2 slash 25 on the first service router. And the second service router will have an IP address of 169.254.0.3 slash 25, as you can see here. And so that means that the DR in order to have ECMP towards the SRs, it will need to have two equal cost multipath default routes towards uh, these two IP addresses that, that are in blue on this diagram, right? That way, for all the traffic that is going north towards the physical world, the traffic will be load balanced between um, edge node one and edge, and edge node two. And as a reminder, um, the compute hypervisor, the, the ESXi, does support um, the two-tuple ECMP hashing. So that means that uh, the source I, uh, it will hash based on the source and, de and, uh, um, and destination IP of each of the flow. And, and then it will choose which, uh, which edge, edge node it will send the traffic to. That way we have a true ECMP layer between the DR and the SR. If we have a look at the table, we can see that we have two equal cost and default route towards uh, dot two and dot three here that are uh, the SRs on edge node one and on edge node two. 
we can see that we have the interface ID, right, on which interface, and that we will use an overlay in order to send the traffic from the DR to DSR. When we have an active standby topology for stateful services, we have a tier zero SR that is active on edge node one, for example, and we have uh, a tier zero SR that is standby on edge node two. So that IP address, in that case, we are using the same IP address between the active SRs and the standby SRs, but the, um, uh, the standby SRs interface is logically shut down. That way we have a single we have a single default route on the on the distributed routers, right? And uh, in that case, we will not have load balancing between the DR and DSR. So there is no ECMP in that case. If we have a look at the at the routing table, same thing as before, we can see that we have a single default route that is pointing to 169.254.0.2, right? And uh, and that we are also using an overlay in order to send traffic between the DR to DSL. Now let's talk about the layer of ECMP between the tier zero SR and the physical world. We do support up to uh, eight ways of, of ECMP. So we, uh, well, the traffic can take eight, eight paths, right? And on the, on, on, on the tier zero SRs that is sitting on an edge node, we do support a five tuple ECMP hashing. So we can see here that we have an active active uh, topology, same as before. So we have load balancing between the DR and DSR. But then since we enabled, uh, we enabled ECMP in the BGP protocol, right? So we enabled ECMP, meaning that if we receive equal cost uh, BGP updates for a particular prefix from the physical router one and physical router two, the tier zero F uh, the tier zero SRs will be able to leverage ECMP towards the physical routers. So in that case, we have two layers of ECMP. We have ECMP between the compute hypervisor uh, towards uh, the edge node, right? So between the DR and DSRs. And in order to do, to do that, we, we, we are hashing the traffic using the two tuples. And then between the SRs and the physical routers, we have another layer of ECMP, thanks to the um, uh, BGP ECMP feature, right? And we are using the five tuple uh, ECMP hashing here so that we can select uh, any link that, that, that we want for a particular flow. In an active standby topology, so you remember what I said before, there is no load balancing between the DR and DSR. That's because we want to use stateful services, uh, the, well, for example, but we are still enabling ECMP for the BGP protocol. And in that case, we can still leverage ECMP between the tier zero SR and the physical world. So traffic will be sent from the tier zero DR on the compute hypervisor towards the tier zero SR that is in active mode on edge node one, for example, and then on edge node one, it can take either the link towards physical, uh, the physical router one or the physical router two. Let's now talk about uh, the BGP best path multipass relax, where uh, as you can see here, so we enabled ECMP and multipath relax in the UI, meaning that if we receive a BGP update from two physical routers in different autonomous system, we will be we will still be able to leverage ECMP and to load balance the traffic northbound to the top of racks to either the the autonomous system 65100 or 65200. Right. Otherwise, if we do not enable multipath relax, BGP will choose. Um, uh, the BGPIS 65100, for example. So yes, if we if we dig a little bit deeper, if we if we look at the CLI here, we can see that we have um, for we have a default route, right? That is pointing to 
both next up to 10.10 uh, .10 and 11.11. .11. And the AS pass length is exactly the same. So we have three autonomous system, right? In the AS path. And uh, the first one is obviously the one that we received the BGP update from. You can see here we are re receiving one BGP update from uh, 65100 and the other BGP update from 65200. And that way in uh, here, we can see that it's both the best path and the multipath route. So we are leveraging ECMP here and load balancing the traffic between uh, that 10.10 uh, .10 and 11.11. .11. Let's conclude uh, this presentation with talking about uh, ECMP in, in OSPF. So it is very similar with, uh, with what we talk about with um, uh, BGP, but here uh, we do receive, uh, uh, we do receive the LSAs for a particular prefix with the same cost, right? And that way we can leverage ECMP towards the physical router. And it is the same thing. We just have to enable ECMP in the UI for the OSPF protocols. I'm showing you here uh, the, the, um, uh, the active active uh, the topology so that we have two layers of ECMP. We have the uh, ECMP layer between the DR and the SR and then the ECMP layer between the SR towards the OSPF routers, uh, which are uh, the, the top of our switches. And if we have a look at the at the CLI, uh, same thing as uh, with BGP before, we are able to uh, well to visualize which we which uh, uplink we are using, and that um, ECMP is supported. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I, I thank you for watching. Do not hesitate to reach out if you have any question. Thank you very much.